We are back. So again, good morning, everybody. Uh, this week, I prepared my uh, master thesis, which I did uh, as part of uh, architectural design at UCL. Uh, I was in team with uh, other three people. So, and this was like our uh, master thesis design project, like for I think eleven months, twelve months. Yeah. So. Um, Firstly, let me introduce the problem, which is air pollution. Air pollution uh, has, uh, comes from different source sources. It can be mainly from combustion that is caused by transport, uh, production, wildfires, uh, and many more things. And it can be harmful to humans, especially this particle, which is called PM2.5. The PM is just like the, the size of the particle. Uh, as you can see, it's slightly uh, smaller than a red blood cell. And the problem with this particle is that once it gets to your um, like body, it can cause headaches, uh, nose irritation, throat irritation, and can also lead to even like lung cancer and lung problems and cardiovascular disease. So, um, and air pollution is a worldwide problem spreading mainly uh, in uh, South Asia. That's mainly due to the reasons that there are lots of like uh, production companies and complexes in that region and due to the wind currents, um, they kind of accumulate in that area. And you probably saw pictures of like smog cities and people wearing masks there because the, the, oh, the air is very polluted. But our scope um, was uh, London. London doesn't have the smog clouds now <laughs> yet, <laughs> but when you look underground, it's actually very polluted. Um, the WHO organization said that um, five micro, I think micrograms per meter cubed is the standard. And as you can see um, in Marble Arch, it's 136. <laughs> so that's crazy lot. Um, and we looked especially on King's Cross. Uh, that's due to the fact that it kind of uh, works as a transport hub, having like national rails, uh, four lines, and also the amount of people that like transfer there um, every day. So um, looking closely to King's Cross, um, here you can see some statistics of how many people travel through there every day, what are the peak hours. And um, the worst line is the Victoria line, especially the platform. Because when we did our research, we found out that there are actually like no air ventilation um, like holes or anything. It's just built plainly without it. So we looked around the station, took different measurements, and really the Victoria line is highly polluted. Um, and this is a diagram just to explain how the um, like the wind works in the tube, so you have fresh air coming in, but the PM2.5 particles are kind of captured on the platform, and when the train passes, um, they just like move the fresh wind, but they, like the the PM2.5 part particles are too heavy to be moved by the wind, so they are kind of like just captured and like whisked around the the area, <laughs> and yeah, so uh, then you develop into uh, what is used nowadays for. Um, like air filtration and also water filtration and uh, as you can see on the diagram um, there are like three main parts of a mask primary filter micro filter and then the activated carbon layer so we researched activated carbon um, I forgot to mention that my studio was very materially based so it was actually called the material research lab so <laughs> that's why all of this chemistry now um, so activated carbon, uh, thanks to its uh, physical properties, has uh, meso, micro, and uh, macro pores. And each of these can capture different types of toxins. It's also very much used in medicine uh, for the same reasons. Um, and once it becomes saturated, it can actually be uh, recycled or reactivated. So this is a rough life cycle of activated carbon. Um, it can be um, like
like extracted from natural sources and then um, heated up to become this like activated carbon, not just normal carbon. But as you saw, it's just a powder. So then we were like, we need to bind it with something to create a material which we can use to build something from. We research seaweed, uh, clay, and bioplastic, and the bioplastic came as the the best um, option. We did different ratios, figuring out like one of them gave us more gluey material. Some uh, ratios gave us more like hard, and others like more flexible material. And the final solution that we uh, had was using uh, this amount. And we also proposed like kind of a recycling uh, procedure because we need now to separate the activated carbon from the bioplastic. But the problem was like when we have this activated carbon binded with the bioplastic, will it still filter out the air? So uh, we created this test device um, that you can see on the screen and then tested it in like a controlled environment and also in the tube itself. So firstly, the controlled experiment um, but as you can imagine, the activated carbon, it captures the toxins on the surface. So the aim was to lower the volume while increasing the surface area. So <laughs> as thin as possible, basically. And we experimented with different uh, surface areas. So obviously first one was without activated carbon. And you can see even after 10 minutes, um, the levels were still not as at the beginning. With one piece, um, it was still not perfect, although like it dropped significantly. And then when we tested um, two pieces and four pieces, you, you can, oh, you can uh, here you can see the surface area. So with four pieces, it dropped significantly to almost half the time. Um, and then we also did tests on the on Houston Square Station. Uh, experimenting with like without the filter and with the filter. Obviously, not every single particle is captured, but it was still better than without any filter. So um, then, my group focused on um, like creating different modules. Because our aim, our first aim proposal, was to create something for the tube. So we needed to think about like what we can mount to the already existing structure in the tube. And these were some modules that we developed over the course of the semester. Um, talking about manufacturing, uh, we used different devices from scraping to printing um, to like both hand and uh, machine based. Um, here you can see some of the prints, because um, the bioplastic, once the water evaporated, it uh, deformed. So we needed something to keep the deformation controlled, or not, like, because the... Because once it will deform uncontrollably, we could, like, mount it together as it will be, like, weird shapes. So here are some of the bolts that we did just to test how much it deforms. Um, and as you can see, like these are what it should be achieving, but in reality, it was <laughs> deforming in weird shapes. So um, we tested out different patterns on a flat surface and realized that, okay, if we print on it in a systematic manner, it might actually deform controllably, which we then did on a bigger scale. This is just to explain how uh, the method works. So firstly, you scrape the material uh, on a flat sheet then you put it on a mold, and once it's on the mold, you print uh, on top of it. Um, then this is just the diagram to explain that like we needed to increase the surface area as much as possible on the small space that we had. So we just curved the bit, and we were also inspired by a leaf structure, as it is like main branch, and then it branches to um, like sub branches and even like subdivisions. So um, we put this in like a bigger scale and created a mold uh, that using CCN. 
like we carved it out, carved it out. And then once the mold was done, we placed the flat sheet on top, put the main branches and some branches on top, and this created like part of the funnel that we then then duplicated. And um, it was similar to the diagram that I showed about like increasing the surface area. Here are some pictures of the prototype that we did. Yeah. <laughs> and we also did like wind simulations, trying to understand how the wind will flow through it. Um, but then we were also scared that the wind, uh, that the tube kind of creates a strong wind uh, inside. So we need like a proper support structure. So we decided to use steel and we mounted um, our material or like the panels to steel and then like created this uh, aggregation module. And uh, moving on. So this is kind of like how we would aggregate it around the platform section with still leaving like enough space for people to move around. That's one of the visuals that we did. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, the second scenario was a breathing pod, which, you know, Bartlett, so we extended the idea even further and was like, okay, so imagine there's like a dystopian future where you can't breathe outside <laughs> and you can only like wear masks. So this is like, a breathing pod that can like uh, encapsulate like one or two people and you will be able like to breathe in only there. So this is the structure for it. We also used um, steel structure for the um, main part and then or like main skeleton and then the rest was done using the activated carbon with bioplastic. And this is the, the final final thing that we did. So that's the presentation part done, but now we actually created a video as well, which I'm about to show you now. You can drink it, like people actually drink it to like get rid of toxins. Like not with the bioplastic, but activated carbon you can eat it. <laughs> like the whole process so the yellow thing was charged you know? obviously you have water there and this is the activated carbon powder the whole style like the one of the girls in my team she was very passionate about like preparing it and like having it like perfect so. <laughs> I think one day we stay like five days and like finish like, the shoot again. Okay.
Extended to, I think, like even 200 pages or so. Mm, yeah. This is just like <laughs> the 10 minute version. <laughs> wow. That's really cool. That's really good as well. It was also like completely something different than like yeah. you would think about architecture. Like when yeah, I came yeah, yeah. To, to the battle, I was like, okay, like architecture number one school, like number one school of architecture. So this should be like really architecture heavy. And then I ended up like <laughs> learning about chemistry and like how to mix substances yeah. together. I don't want to go to the chief now. Yeah, like now every time I'm moving, I'm like always thinking like, okay, is this line clean? Is this or is this line clean? Central? Is that worse than the Victoria line? Oh, Central is probably not good as well because it's... It's just the worst one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, okay, Elizabeth, good. Hammersmith City, that's also a lie. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.